Good afternoon. My name is Chris Rabelais, and I'm the co-founder of All Sports Market. Today is Sunday, August 9th, 2020, and it's about 3.30 p.m. here in Pasadena, California. Here's the update for the last week. So first, uh, the game schedules and closings are now up to date and will be kept up to date. So uh, everything is on schedule there. LinkedIn searches on All Sports Market and my name are up again this past uh, week. Lord & Taylor, 200-year-old company, files for bankruptcy. This is important because uh, companies this old don't tend to fail like this. And we've seen a number of 100-year-old companies failing, and now you have a 200-year-old company failing. So this is an indicator of, of, of how uh, bad things are and how much of a, a financial shock this is to the system. Major city murders are up 25% year over year. That's also a huge change. That's definitely a result of increasing stress and um, social unrest. So that's really not a surprise. Uh, we're looking for uh, an official data provider that we can use in place of the one that we had to uh, open and close games and also with an eye towards the future expansion around the world so that we can keep up with these automated opens and closes. And also since the online gambling world has uh, grown a bit since we've done this five years ago, six years ago, uh, we're going to look at the official data provider market to find uh, a more uh, robust data source. But in the meantime, we'll just keep up with this stuff manually. So the XFL uh, has been uh, sold for $15 million. Uh, everybody knows who, who bought it, uh, The Rock, I guess, and maybe some of his partners. That's a very small number. Obviously, it's just for the brand names and such. It's quite a steal, actually. Um, Paul has some contacts there that he's been talking to for several months now, so I'm going to let that alone. Uh, when there's something to report, uh, he'll either report it to me or he'll report it directly, but it's, there's nothing to say about that yet. Um, the ASM fight against gambling is much like the cigarette fight. Uh, if you remember back, at least I do, from, from the 70s, I believe, is really when I, so 80s really is when it took off in the 1980s. So the reason I'm mentioning this, we, we made this comparison back in, in the mid-2000s, um, the Costa Rica period, that I saw ASM as a safer cigarette. That was one of the, uh, the references. I think it's a bit more than that. I mean, we were really just kind of grasping what we had done. It's really a case of building something with a novel kind of idea. And then as the idea develops and you build it, you, you realize that there's something more to it that you didn't originally see and that's really happened quite a few on quite a few major things related to ASM so I can't claim that we had this grand vision right from the beginning it was just a, a novel idea of the combination between a, a sports stock market and, and sports I mean a, a, the stock market and sports betting uh, an alternative to that so anyway clarification there so when I say it's like a cigarette fight that means that I expect to have nonstop opposition with this. Uh, you know, this is not, they're not gonna roll over and play dead no matter what. So anybody that's thinking that's gonna happen is, is, is just foolish. It's not gonna happen. We're gonna have to fight and scratch our way through this just like uh, the health authorities did with, the gam uh, with cigarettes. It's, it's the same kind of storyline. It's gambling is bad for you. Uh, we understand that you wanna put your money into sports, but there's a better way. So this is going to be a difficult challenge, okay? It always was going to be a difficult challenge. So to, to think anything else is just nonsense. It's, it's, uh, it's the same kind of a fight, okay? Same kind of a fight. Um, August 3rd, 2020 is the six year anniversary of the ASM learning market. Uh, that's just past this past week. So the learning market's been operational for six years. The pilot market just over four years. As I previously explained, we filed the no action letter uh, in March of 2016. So that's the timeline on that. So if you notice the news coverage, you're seeing a lot of SPACs being announced. And now let's clarify something here. The SPAC idea is not new. It's been around for quite a while. Uh, if you do some statistical research on SPACs, you're gonna find there's quite a number of them out there. The market has got a lot of them out there. So this is not, um, this is not a sudden stampede of something new. This is not a new thing. SPACs are something that have been around. The new thing is that they've become kind of in vogue and they've become, uh, you know, a lot of attention has been brought to it principally because of uh, DraftKings. Uh, that, I'm pretty sure that's where it's come from. 
So uh, I just want to set the stage there because it's not like it's going to run out or suddenly it's going to disappear or nobody's going to care anymore. The, the, creating that kind of a uh, pressure is a false emergency. This is not going anywhere. Um, and I'd like to make the ref reference. To, to, so we have time to plan this out and do it correctly. There's no emergency here for, for a, to look and see if this is an, uh, it's a viable uh, mechanism for us. Okay. So there is no emergency. Be clear about that. And it's not going to vanish. Okay. So don't, don't put your head there either. Um, I would like to point out though, that the, if you see what's happening to like everybody and their mother trying to figure out how they can put us back together, that, that shiny bauble chasing, I call it the chasing of shiny objects. That is, I don't look at the world like that. I'm not a flash in the pan person, but unfortunately most people are, it seems in the world. And that's why flashy things, uh, keep happening. <laughs> um, I don't know how else to put that. Uh, you know, I, I'm more interested in the foundational things that don't move and don't change. But what you see there is a public appetite being created by the excitement created by the storyline. So my uh, claim here is that with ASM, you're going to see the same kind of thing happen for sports leagues wanting to raise money and ideas for sports leagues to raise money multiply once we get one single example in the public domain, one public fundraise, one example that everybody can see. That multiplication, that's what the rush will look like toward us to, to see if, A, teams that are already out there can use the mechanism for themselves, and also ideas for new leagues will look at it to see if it's a way to do it, which is what we want. So, again, it comes back to the get one public example, and that will open the door and, and the floodgates. Okay, so that's the, there's kind of two parts to the story there with the SPAC thing. So I just got a, a message from ACE um, just literally five minutes ago. Uh, if you've been tracking the news, you're going to see James Hong is getting a lot of chatter. They're actually talking about doing a, uh, a, a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Apparently he can't afford it. Don't, don't think that all actors make fortune. It's really, it's a journeyman job for a lot of people. If you, you know, it's just, it, that's how they pay their bills. Like you, you get a job to go and uh, do whatever you do or a contract to do something. It's exactly the same. So a lot of these are just, um, you know, they're just working. You know, they, you know, sometimes their films do great. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're just doing it to pay the rent. So anyway, there's a story out today about him with a Hollywood walk, uh, you know, getting a star on the Walk of Fame. It looks like the storyline is building towards him being the most credited actor in the history of acting. And, and to refresh, Ace is finishing up a movie they've been working on since the summer of 18 with James Hong and Zach Ward is still there. Uh, Zach has been working on that film with Ace for two years now. I think a little longer than that if you go back to the story creation. But um, so that that storyline is building. And Ace told me that the um, this, they're, they're looking for a December release. So obviously, with December, you've got Zach and Christmas Story. And Zach is the director. Okay, and I, I think something else. I may be misstating this. I, I didn't look at the card closely, but I know the principals in this are, are Zach Ace and James Hong. So, um, and, the, and it's Patsy Lee is uh, Patsy Lee in the Five Kingdoms or Seven Kingdoms, Five Kingdoms, I think. If you want to look it up. So, uh, if that uh, comes out in December, between all this uh, excitement around James and and Zach's natural uh, twelve, you know, month every twelve months he makes a trip up the star meter, then that's going to bring a whole lot of attention over, over to, to them, which they can use for, for whatever they want. I'm not, you know, I don't know what that's going to be. I'm just telling you that there's a stage setting that's going on right now that could be very, very beneficial for everything that we're connected to. And all, all you know, we, we've shown you in the past with the press and stuff and the parties and the press releases and the news stories that there's a synergy here between uh, the, the Hollywood fr friends that we have in Hollywood and, and, and getting exposure from ASM. In fact, we wouldn't be sitting here right now talking about it if it wasn't for Zach Ward, quite frankly, because he his star power pulled all the attention that we still uh, have, you know, we used to get the momentum going to get us where we are and to keep going, frankly. So, um, you know, fingers crossed. I don't have any control over that. It's not my, my project. It's all up to ASAC and, and Mr. Hong. But 
but you know, let's let's hope that they can pull off a December release because it'll be quite a coup. Um, okay, so on the uh, the game uh, the fanless games, uh, I I've, I've kind of scanned some of the clips and stuff. The NHL setup looks really good. I, I like the the covers over the stands. I think that's very slick. Um, you know, it it looks it looks fine. It looks. Um, I think I think you either do that or you do a, a simulation of of CGI AI or whatever fans in the stands, something like that. I I, I actually I'm not even sure that's a good idea because people will tear that to pieces and they'll they'll like that's not a real person or. That's, you know, a, a clip from somebody 25 years. I'm not sure that that will get it done. Um, it, it's going, um, you know, as critical as people are about everything, if they only knew how hard it was to actually make things like this work. Um, there, I think the better plan, just my opinion, is that black cover, um, you know, with the logos over it. I think that works. But I think between that and the and a CGI version, the, the the cardboard cutouts that that is <laughs> for you guys are in show business. I can't believe that that you would put that out there like that. It looks completely ridiculous. It looks so cheese ball. It's it's just uh, wow, bad, extremely bad. Look, um, so we're getting almost uh, as an aggregate open rate across all emails. Uh, and all list segments, I'm getting a 78% open rate on uh, all sports market communications across the list. That's uh, and it's been increasing. It started at about 50 and some change four months ago, five months ago. It's been climbing up uh, over time, and now it's at 78%. It was a story about uh, some baseball players going to a casino and then getting sick uh, from COVID and then giving it to some of their friends. <laughs> That's pretty much the ideal uh, anti-COVID gambling story. So I'll just leave that there. Um, Disney loses five billion a quarter first time in 20 years. Look, it, you can't blame it all on on not stuffing people in the theaters and and Disney World and Disneyland. I mean, Disney's organization is a licensing entity with properties all over the world and all kinds of different revenue streams, and for them to lose. One and a half more, actually more than one and a half billion dollars a month, uh, doesn't really tell me too many good things about their corporate governance and strategic planning uh, departments. Because you shouldn't have been hit this hard uh, with all the channels that you have uh, bringing revenues in from all aggregate properties. So again, this goes back to how difficult environment this is, even for the most capable people in the world, supposedly. I mean, I'm my experience in the world, that's mostly a bunch of hype and bullshit and puffery. But if you take it as stated, uh, it's not looking so good. You shouldn't be losing $5 billion in a quarter. Not as Disney should, should, should have been able to see some of this coming, um, especially uh, from the first quarter. Uh, you know, this was second quarter. Uh, the Wynn Resorts in Vegas, Staggering loss, not even close. The expectations are so far off the map. So that tell, if you look at the analysts, the analysts are not even close. They're off by like 80%. That tells me that it, they really don't have any realistic view on what's going on. You should not have analysts that are getting uh, missing by this far. So they're either lying, deliberately trying to deceive the markets to hype the stock, or they don't have any idea what they're talking about. But it can't. You can't miss by this far. Analyst, analyst numbers and, and, you know, it's the whisper numbers, they call it, and the earnings reports don't usually diverge by too much. I've seen in the, in the recent uh, last four months or so, five months, they are f headed off into no man's land in either direction. So something, something bad is happening there with the reporting. So Vegas is a complete mess. Uh, don't believe me. You can look up all the stories yourself. Uh, the story I'd like to focus on is uh, Adelson, who's the prime driver of trying to stop DraftKings and other online gambling outfits. Remember I told you that the snakes are going to fight with each other. The battle will turn into uh, Sheldon Adelson versus the online operators. So we'll call it Sheldon Adelson versus DraftKings right now because FanDuel is really not, not in the game yet. They're trying to get in the game. Uh, I think they're trying to do a spec or something. But right now that battle is between between Sheldon Adelson and DraftKings. And um, 
I've covered this before. You know, Adelson made a deal with Trump somewhere along the way, and because Adelson is an eight-figure contributor to the Trump campaign, was last cycle through super PACs and the rest. And apparently, a couple days ago, they had a phone call and a big falling out. And if I were a fly on the wall, I would I would say it went something like this. So Adelson calls Trump to basically ask for help because you you can see that the, the next bill is on the table, actually the executive order thing, which is all going to end up fouled up in the courts like everything else. But it sets the most likely outcome of what's going to happen pretty close. So you should probably see that what, what's in that executive order is going to be pretty close to the legislation that ends up finalized. So I'm imagining that what was happening there is Adelson called up Trump to try to get you know, a piece of that because the, the gambling business has fallen to pieces. The resort business has fallen to pieces in Vegas and, the, and they're, they're bleeding cash at a rate of $10 million a day. I think that was in GM's number. So I was probably a plea for help and uh, Trump turned it around and wanted to know how come he wasn't supporting his campaign, probably meaning paying money and or talking publicly, which he hasn't been. And that turned into some kind of fight. And now they're, there's, they're, they're not talking to each other. So uh, that's about the only guy in the world can write an eight-figure check to Trump, and he just pissed him off. Uh, I imagine that the conversation went something like this. It went, uh, you know, Adelson said, hey, I'm over here dying in Vegas, you know, and, and Trump is like, you know, give me some more money immediately because I have, I'm have i falling behind in the polls and I'm going to lose the election. And Adelson says, uh, well, I don't have any money. Haven't you watched the news? I'm, I'm dead. That's why I'm calling. And Trump probably hung up on him or something to the effect of that, because everything with Trump is, if you're not useful to me now, get the fuck out of here. So we'll see how that turns out. Snakes eating snakes. Speaking of snakes, William Barr and David Bowies go in this, not Bowie, David Bowies, or however the hell you want to pronounce this con man's name, who pretends to be a lawman. I never respected him in the first place because he's taken the side. He's the reason you have this cocked up mess of daily fantasy and all the rest of this bullshit with gambling and all these conflicting legal opinions. He's supposed to be the greatest lawyer in America. Yeah, bullshit. Okay, he might be the biggest liar in America. Now I'm sure of it because I just finished the uh, the book on uh, uh, the, 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 the medical devices story. The... Uh, the lady that started that, that um, goodness, the name completely slips me of the company. Uh, it was a complete scam. Uh, the testing, testing book, uh, Bad Blood is the name of the book. And David Boyce is the principal legal person behind it. So he's going around threatening people and all the rest of this stuff uh, to keep quiet because they're testing. Their whole thing was a, was a complete scam. The, the, the machines didn't work. They were using regular testing devices. And David Boyce is the legal person behind this. So that's that's the end of the line for me. That's that's it. Okay, that's the law and that's the line in the sand for me. I don't buy it. I don't believe the legal system is intact anymore. I think it's been corrupted. You have William Barr at the top. William Barr at the top, who's lying for acting like a personal fix-it man for the president. That's not his job. That's not why the taxpayers pay his salary. Which, by the way, his his salary is paid by the taxpayers, not by Donald Trump. It's a personal account, okay? That's not his job. He's supposed to be the chief lawman. And then you have David Bowies, who's the best lawyer in America. He's behind the, uh, the, that scandal, bad blood scandal. It's insane, okay? So I, I, don't, I don't believe you guys anymore, okay? I don't believe you anymore. And you know what? I don't care what you do anymore either, okay? Because I believe truth wins out in the end. And when people like this get into power, it's only a matter of time before they're taken out of power. So all I have to do is wait for that change and your accounting is gonna come. It's not, I, I'm not the one doing this stuff, you are. And it actually makes me more suspicious, even more suspicious of what's going on with the SEC, okay? So if I find out there's some kind of political monkey business going on behind the scenes, you're going to see just how capable I am at getting this message out into the public domain that the United States government under the control of this administration is a corrupt enterprise, okay? You're gonna see just how capable I am putting that message out and getting it covered in a way like you have never seen anything get covered that we've done in the past. William Hill and names, lots of names will be named. William Hill, 119 betting shops shut down. Do not put this down to COVID-19. That, that, those guys have been around a long time. And the gambling stuff has been going on in other places sooner, 
sooner than us. Okay, S- soccer stuff, you know, football to be, you know, as they call it, that's been going on, and they're closing 119 shops. That's a significant story. Okay, that's a significant story. Facebook is finally starting to take down public lies on their network, including by the president. Fantastic. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. Okay. Because if you don't do it, if if, at this point in the social media game, if you don't set the standard being Facebook, this problem's never going to get under control. It's going to spin out of control until something that we can't stop because of the misinformation happens and we all pay the price. Moment of opportunity for ASM, it's now, okay? It's not in 2005, it's not in 2010, it's not even 2015. It's right now, okay? It's absolutely right now. This is when we have to prove our case that we have something valuable to the marketplace, that we can create capital, form, we can form capital in a new way. That's, this is the, this is the once in a lifetime opportunity. Not before now. We were not prepared. We did not have all the technology. We did not know what we were doing to the degree that we do now. We did not understand all the pieces that were necessary, but not true anymore. We do now, okay? So this is the moment. Not not before now. Now. Right now. So every effort should be in that direction. And again, it comes down to one single thing. One single thing. Even if we have to create a league from scratch, which, again, I'm thinking that might be an idea, okay? Prove the case once. Prove the case once. That's it. That's all we have to do. Okay, 32 million, this is driving me insane because we cannot have financial reporting like this in the world. This has to stop, okay? This report of unemployment being at 10% is a flat lie, okay? Flat falsehood, completely false, okay? I don't know where this is coming from. It's political. It's got to be political because there is no other explanation for it, okay? Do the math. Go to the Department of Labor, look at the unemployment report, and look at the number of all programs. You cannot cherry pick the numbers. You have to look at total of all unemployment claims and all programs. It's 32 million. It was about 1.6, 1.7 million a year ago. 1.7 million to 32 million, okay? That's what's happened, okay? 32 million claims, 160 million workforce. That's, That's the number. Nobody even argues that number with any straight face, okay? That's the number. That's 20%. So they're underreporting it by half. Half. Why does that matter? Because policy decisions are being made right now, right now, based upon wrong information, okay, that are going to be devastating, not to the people at the top, to the people at the bottom and in the middle, which are supposed to be the people that the Trumpster is supposed to be helping. If you tell, if you go into policy meetings, thinking the employment rate is 10%, when it's 20%, you're going to screw that up big time, okay? So I don't know either if you don't know what you're doing or you're doing it on purpose, but either way, if you don't report it correctly, harms are going to multiply, period, okay? The LIBOR scandal a few years ago from the crash of 808, this is like a hyper extended version of that, okay? Look up the LIBOR scandal. That was a tiny misrepresentation in the numbers, but the impact was throughout the financial system and huge fines had to be paid. And here we are underreporting the U.S. employment rate by half? I mean, sick, 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 sick. This is sick. Our YouTube channel, which by the way, that's going to be the focus. I... I am not into shiny baubles, and I'm not into chasing trends around, okay? That's for novices and short-term thinkers that don't accomplish much of anything, okay? Stick with the stuff that works. TV isn't going anywhere. TV is a thing, okay? So we're going to focus our strategy around YouTube, and the rest of that stuff really don't care. Instagram, Facebook, garbage, none of that, or the next 
thing that lives for two years and, and sucks $500 million out of the VC market and dies, I couldn't care less. YouTube isn't going anywhere. YouTube is, is I mean, it's created countless stars and the rest. It's television, okay? So we're going to focus on television through YouTube. That's the main platform. We're going to start paying much more attention on that uh, to that and focusing energy on that. So uh, I pulled the statistics, again, showing that things are on the uptick because I could see the views are, are rising. So our statistics for the past 30 days against the previous 30 days, so last, you know, 30 days backward from now against the 30 days, pre, actually 28 days backwards and then against the 28 days behind that, um, 1,587 views, 175.4 total hours, up 38% from the previous 30, uh, 28 days. So that's uh, it's quite good, making progress. Uh, so, so in the um, body of this message, you're going to see a survey. One of the questions in that survey is about um, whether or not you'd be interested in creating a sub-channel on our YouTube channel. So uh, to, to, to create your own voice, maybe in a particular sector, maybe you want to uh, talk about base, you know, baseball or a particular part of baseball. I think at this point now, um, we should look at building this network by creating more voices inside of it. So one of the survey questions is that. So um, let me know, if, you know, let all of us know if you'd be interested in that. I'm seeing accounts waking up going back to 2014 when, when the ASM learning market was first started up. Uh, that's really, really encouraging sign. Literally, they've never, ever traded anything, and now they are. Um, as long as we don't suck, we can print dollars forever. Okay, this is a little bit of a too big of a question to deal with right now on this video, probably something for, for, for later. But basically, because the U.S. has reserve currency status, as long as the world doesn't hate our guts, uh, which right now we have a problem with this, <laughs> uh, we can pretty much do what we want in terms of fiscal policy, and the world will go along with it, which allows us to inflate and, and do all kinds of stuff that nobody else can do in the world. But it, it, it's predicated on one thing. It's predicated upon the world being, feeling, at, at minimum, not that we're a threat, which that's currently not the way the world sees us. So that's got to go away. Second is that we're a neutral power or we're a benign power. That certainly isn't where we are. And third, uh, that we're a benevolent power. And you can track economic uh, results that will stick over a long period of time to feel good periods, okay? To periods when people felt good about America. They don't feel good about America right now. So that's going to threaten us financially. <laughs> OK, I mean, it will. And there's not we don't have enough guns and bombs if the whole world turns on us. We don't have enough to take on everybody. So if that's where your head is at, I suggest you take a, a closer look because that's not true. If everybody gangs up on us and dumps our currency or decides to all get together and attack us, we're, we're done. We're not that strong. So that's arrogant bullshit if you think so. <laughs> I mean, unless the whole world's going to go up in smoke. I mean, you can do that, but you're as far as winning decisively, if the whole world turns against us, no, that's not going to happen. Um, all right, so yeah, what is uh, you know, the, how would I sum up the COVID nineteen core truth uh, that is affecting the world? I would say that. Every human being is having to wake up to the realization that there's a real threat of unexpected harm or death that can happen in a short period of time. Okay. Uh, you know, I don't recall ever thinking that I could be walking down the street, pass somebody, they sneeze on me, and two weeks later I'm dead. And that's a real thing. Okay. Now, look. Any of you out there that think it's not a real thing, please, please stop, okay? I know enough names, now, not, not personal people that I know. I gave one name, okay, F former presidential candidate, okay? Th but that's enough, okay? I don't have another name at this moment. I have people that are separated by one degree of separation uh, who I know of. But this is a real threat, okay? Um, that was not the flu that killed him, okay? That was COVID-19, and it did it very quickly. 
Okay. So I think that what the world is dealing with is the concept of a, uh, somebody could sneeze on me when I'm walking down the street and, and I could be dead in two weeks and it puts a, uh, it should, because <laughs> it's a real threat. Okay. Uh, it puts a, a constant thing in your head, right? Kind of a low, a low threshold pain. that's kind of always there and anxiety and that, that's going to have, I mean, I don't have any idea what those effects are, but they're going to be effects. <laughs> you can't do this to a whole world full of people and something doesn't happen from it. Um, okay. So anyway, that's just, uh, you know, thinking about stuff. Ran um, all right. So gatekeepers, this is another thing. We are not paying bribes. And that, that shows up these days in law firms that you hire and such. We're not paying any bribes to any gatekeepers, okay? Let me tell you why. We got a patent issued in China. China, the supposed corrupt regime, we didn't bribe anybody. Even though I was told by people that I respect that I would have to pay bribes, we didn't pay any bribes, okay? This is not the way it's supposed to work. Do you see an all sports market out there somewhere other than this one? No, then you issue the goddamn patent, okay? Do you see a sports risk index out there other than the one we have? No, then you issue the goddamn patent, okay? That's not happening, and these games that lawyers play, I don't, I, look, if it's about I didn't hire the right law firm, and that's why you're not issuing the patents, or if I didn't hire the right law firm, you're not giving us our no action letter, I'm going to throw a monkey wrench into that bullshit. You can be sure. I am not going to stand for that. That is crap. That is not the way it works. That is not the way it's going to work. That is, we actually tried it, okay? Remember when we hired Sharon and Paul? That was hiring the gatekeepers, okay? That hasn't worked. So I'm not going to do it again, okay? I'm going to take the gatekeepers and I'm going to remove them from the gate and walk through. That's what's going to happen. Gatekeeper, walk through, okay? No more bribes. No more you didn't hire the right law firm. No more of that. I don't believe you. I think you're full of shit. I think you just steal from people, and I'm not doing it anymore. It's over, okay? So that game isn't going to work. We're going to go find somebody that's going to let us raise the money, and we're just going to go raise the money. And you can do whatever you want, okay? What, sue me again? <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Send some more paperwork, you know? But I don't believe you anymore. I don't believe you anymore. I don't believe you anymore. Got it? I don't believe you anymore. Ridiculous. <clears throat> Market values are normalizing on ASM. Uh, there was, I didn't get into this because I was busy with other stuff, but it looks like somebody went in before the games restarted and they pushed up some of the prices in order to skew the, the market index number so then they could go and, and, and point to it in a public forum and make fun of it. That would be consistent with this group of assholes and idiots. So I wouldn't be surprised. Bottom line, the prices came back down uh, to where they belong now that the, the market has started back up and it's, it's now stable. Uh, at a, you, know, you can see it for yourself. It, it jumped way up, but the trend line, it's an errant tick. You can clearly see that it's way off the mark. And it was the result of just a handful, I think really just one or two uh, on the learning market side that somebody kicked them way up in order to skew the index and, and basically, you know, so it's uh, just more of the same deceptive garbage coming from the liars. Um, all right, so uh, no USPS. Okay, so all of this, look, without the United States Postal Service, there would be no all sports market, okay? I want you to hear that clearly. Without the United States Postal Service, there would be no all sports market because the way that all sports market was, was funded by me before anybody gave us a dime, okay, out of my pocket was from direct mail returns results, my portion of the profits of a direct mail project that was in the mail. <laughs> direct mail means direct mail, it means you mail. I did a lot of business with the United States Postal Service, okay, a lot. Okay, and that my profit portion of that was how we paid for ASM. So I don't I don't like and I've dealt with the post office, uh, you know, on all kinds of things for many, many years, as most people. But I mean, as a commercial mailer. Okay, so 
all of this talk about the I don't like it. I don't think it's fair. I, you know, I think the the post, postal service is really, and I've said this before, is really an amazing system. When you when you examine it, it's an amazing system. There's nothing like it in the world. Um, and all this constant thrashing these people and threatening their jobs and and trying to bankrupt it. Look, the voting by mail thing is normal. Okay, <laughs> I get those requests. We we do that in California here. Okay, it's it's nothing, no nothing abnormal about that. I know that the mail times are slowing down. I, I absolutely am sure of it because I've tested it and I've noticed I noticed the delays and I it's I would say at this point it's taking twice as long to get a piece of mail from one location to another inside the US as it did 30 days ago. Twice as long, okay? Now, whether that's deliberate or that's a real budget problem, I mean, they are having a real budget problem and they can't, I don't know that part, but it's awful interesting to me. You know, we have a major, major, uh, you know, uh, I, they have different levels, they call them, but this is a monster facility here that's connected to the Pasadena Post Office. So when I put uh, things in the mail there before cutoff, they move very fast, generally. I mean... For example, uh, you know, in times past, I've been able to get a first-class envelope from uh, from Los Angeles to to Washington D.C., putting it on the mail on a Saturday uh, in first-class mail. Now, first class, not not to priority, and it would travel over the weekend and land on Monday in Washington. That doesn't happen anymore. In fact, just mail that's supposed to just go across Los Angeles is now taking. Uh, sometimes a week. So something is up. Okay. Something is, something is rough. Something is up. Uh, TikTok. Look, I'm only going to say this. If you're going to start appropriating uh, companies from their rightful owners, we're no better than the communists are in China that you love to talk about so much. If you, if you start mandating that companies have to be bought and sold, then we're no longer a democracy. The end. And we're no longer a free, this is no longer a liberal economy and a liberal business environment. So that's, I think you're after, uh, after I forget her name, I, names are terrible. I forget my own name if I didn't have it written down. Sarah, I guess her name is, I guess maybe that whole TikTok blow up thing. That, she did a good job. She nailed it. So I guess he hated that. So now he's going to steal the company from the rightful owners. <laughs> okay. Um, Jerry Falwell Jr. Dude. Wow. Okay. Sports insurance, uh, risk, sports risk. That story is finally, finally getting some traction. I'm starting to see almost every day now a story about insurance and sports risk. And once again, sports risk index. <laughs> Give us a call. Um, the DC sports betting numbers are uh, positively awful. Do your own research. Um, believe me, the politicos are going to watch the numbers that are right in their backyard. Okay. Not even close. They never are. In fact, it's a fraction of, I think it's less than 10% of the numbers. <laughs> the project, I think it's less than 1% at, at this moment per, uh, of what they were told. Less than 1%. <laughs> uh, Okie dokie. Uh, so, so you enslave people and steal from them and, and, and line the pockets of scumbags uh, in order to collect a little bit of tax money, which isn't going to be anything close to what you thought. It's going to be less than 10%, less than 1%, I think, at the moment. Uh, in, in For what? You know, you don't think you're going to need that money to pay for all the harms that have come from the, mis from, from the robbers, from, from the people losing their money to the gamblers? Foolishness. Um, okay, so in the, uh, in the body of the, me uh, the message connected to this video, there's a survey. Um, please, please consider taking that survey about uh, about uh, three. It's just got three questions. If you have a moment, it'll be very helpful. Also, signing the petition. Uh, we're almost to a thousand online uh, signatures. This this stuff will count. It's not it's not uh, a small thing. It's going to count more in the future. Uh, please sign that petition as well if if you agree with it, obviously. Uh, and that's 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 going to be very helpful for us. Um, all of ASM stats are on an upswing, very serious upswing. I'm seeing it across the board, um, you know, 50 to 100 percent. Some some stats are even higher than that, which is really, really good. Um, that's an excellent thing to see on the restart of sports. 
And then finally, uh, this is a really big topic, so I'm not going to get into the weeds on this because I've got to put the written materials behind it and some other visuals and such to go along with it before I uh, present it to everybody as uh, part of the uh, sports folk, the sports folk manifesto. But here, here's the bottom line. So a fully realized all sports market, as we've laid it out, that means that it's a fully regulated or exempt um, one-to-one -one bank stock market construction, the, what we had envisioned from the start. Uh, in, if that is done, the result, and it's denominated in U.S. dollars, okay, so it's denominated in dollars. Remember that the benefits are always going to accrue to the currency, okay? So if that, um, if that ASM market, if the ASM market is denominated in dollars, so this is, the, this is the conditions, okay, and fully realized, meaning give us, you know, our, our exemption or our regulation so that we can show that we're we're just like the bank down the street, although the bank down the street isn't the, gonna, isn't the reference. I think I would say like the credit union down the street because that, their governance is much tighter. In fact, maybe we should start using that. I, I like that better. Um, the, here's the, what the result will be. Take 1% of the global GDP. Now, that number it looks like you know about $150 trillion right now. That's the global GDP. Um, the ASM market denominated in dollars will take 1% of that global GDP, whatever it is, doesn't matter where the growth happens, anywhere in the world, doesn't matter, it's, it's the total. So 1% of that gross GDP will accrue to the national GDP. So if the, if the world GDP is $150 trillion, then that's $1.5 trillion a year will be added to the U.S. GDP. OK, now there's a lot of other knock on effects and there's other things that will happen. But that's a num that's where you start because the GDP numbers where you start and then you can drill down in there and kind of figure out what the impacts are, depending on what sectors have access to that economic activity and all that. That's much too complicated for right now. And it's actually I'm not through that stuff yet, but I am confident and comfortable to say publicly that this is the result. OK. This is going to be important for the political side of things. Believe me, I've always said this is the political job. This is the this is the storyline. This is the headline. One percent global GDP, whatever that number is, accrues to U.S. So 150 trillion would be one and a half trillion. You would add that one and a half trillion to the U.S. GDP, whatever it is, which is about 20 something trillion right now. You know, so that's the numbers. Okay, it's a very simple formula. And then on top of that, the transaction tax. I would say. Um, that you know, and you need to do it in the beginning because if you don't do it in the beginning and you try to put the tax in later, people are going to scream and complain because people and scream and complain about everything. Okay, whine, whine, whine about everything. If there's one thing I've learned about being, having any sort of public persona or having to do with things in the public domain is people whine about everything. You cannot have that tax afterward. You have to incorporate it into the construction and set it out in the beginning. So. I would say, and, they, and they've talked about this before in Washington, a transaction tax on Wall Street. I would say that's a great idea. Put that, if you want to test run it without pissing off everybody on Wall Street, why don't you test it on us? Put the transaction tax, it needs to be very small so that it's not seen the same way that the 1% is buried in the ASM transaction fees. It needs to be very small. Don't get greedy because it's, it, it's going to be a huge amount of money moving around. Between that transaction tax and the GDP add of, of 1%, that, look, that's a minimum. I'm comfortable saying that's the minimum add is 1%. Minimum is 1%. Minim, minimum percent is 1%. Transaction tax, make it small. That's something we'd have to model. I don't know the number, um, but it needs to be tiny. It, won't, it needs to be friction-free, and it needs to be upfront. Install it right in the beginning. In fact, when we get our permit to operate through no action or a license or whatever, this is the discussion I want to have with policymakers because we'll agree to it right up front, okay? Because this is the key to making the, the, the federal budget, now again, this is going to come back to administration and that the money is not wasted and squandered and all that, but between all of these elements, if we put those three pieces, um, you know, the GDP increase, the knock-on tax effects and all the other stuff that is going to happen already because, you know, you're going to have capital gains. You're going to – all that stuff is already built into all levels of government from, from the national level down to the local level. The, the part that is not – and, again, Wall Street has been testing this, so I know that this is something that they would perk up. I mean, why 
that's a great pitch line for us, right? Let us test the transaction tax. <laughs> I think that's a great pitch line. Let us test the transaction tax. That is the solution for the budget problems in the United States, federal budget, okay? I, I can't speak to all state budgets because those that's all decisions that are made at those levels of government. But I'm just saying the whole pie will grow tremendously. And it actually makes me think, and this will be it. I'll close this uh, video down. It makes me remember one of the first um, uh, trips I went on with Alper. I think it was in Chicago back in the mid-2000s uh, that we were talking about this. And his parting words to me, because we're kind of going through – I mean, I understood it would grow the pie back then, but I didn't have my fingers all around all of this. That, that's the key, right? You know, before you start talking about chopping up all the pieces and what tax, the main thing is to first grow the pie, which is increasing the GDP, right? Everybody understand. I think most people now, because they've heard it enough times, knows that when the GDP increases, that's a general welfare increase of the welfare of everyone. Then you start chopping up the pieces. So... For ASM to, to even go beyond all satisfying that, you know, uh, uh, doing doing right by our stakeholders, uh, doing right by society, and then finally doing right by government, this is the key to do it. And I wanted to put this down now and get the basic ideas out there and fix them now because we're going to be developing off of this uh, in the future. So thank you very much. Have a wonderful uh, weekend. Please stay safe uh, with your friends and your family, and uh, I hope you're enjoying the return of sports. And we'd like to hear your input on what you think about uh, the fanless, uh, actually, so we can feed some of this information back into the leagues and also we can help design our plan on how to help them get back to normal, normal. So bye now.